morning guys how are you all doing today we're gonna to be talking about communication today okay so I'm gonna run through a few things with you guys I've got a paper here and this was actually given to me by my own therapist and let me just tell you I've done 14 out of the 15 things here on a regular basis for many years so I still have a lot of work to do but I want you guys to kind of process some of these and share if these are things that you're working on or you catch yourself do. So the first thing is truth. You insist that you are right and the other person is wrong. I'm always right, right? <laughs> you're crazy. Why would you think that way? And then when we really resolve arguments, when we hear the other person's full side and we're able to just and really hear them out, a lot of the reasons make sense. But we can't hear it when we're in an argument and we feel so pressured to assert our own point. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard to admit that we're wrong. And then on the flip side, when we're able to be like, fuck, I messed up. Like, I was thinking this and it didn't go that way and I was just, I, sh I didn't handle that well. I'm so sorry. There's, what we're doing by doing that is we're giving the other person the space to show compassion towards us. Martyrdom. You claim that you're the innocent victim in the whole problem. You're always just a victim of the other person. That they're, you're, you're suffering constantly at their hand. Does that happen? Put downs. You imply that the other person is a loser because he or she always or never does certain things. These are big in therapy. But this is the, Those are red flag words that we listen to when we do couples therapy. You know, no one person always does something a certain way or no one person never ever does something a certain way that it's just at some point they've done it at least once you know in their life so he never kisses me never you've never kissed <laughs> hopelessness you give up and insist there's no point in trying I'm just done I guess we're over you know you give up you quit trying you quit tr wanting to participate in the conversation you stonewall a little bit Passive aggression, you point, you pout or withdraw or say nothing. So this is different from hopelessness. Hopelessness is just not intending to be manipulative at all. It's you just literally feeling like a deer in headlights and not being able to move forward at all and feeling stuck. Passive aggressive means you pout or withdraw or you say nothing. You may storm out of the room or slam doors, but you're doing things to try to get the other person's attention, but in a passive way. As a as, as opposed to a direct way, which would be eye contact. Hey, I'm really upset about this thing that happened and I feel that would be direct. Passive aggressive would be indirect ways of communicating to that person that you are not, not too happy. Self blame. Instead of dealing with the problem, you act as if you're an awful, terrible person. Anybody ever do that? This is a little different from the martyrdom as well. The martyrdom is you're innocent and I was just a victim of the situation where self-blame is like I'm such a shitty person why would I do that I just you know you begin to hate yourself as a result of the argument and take full responsibility for um, causing the problem as opposed to recognizing that it was shared responsibility no argument is ever one person's fault completely it it takes two to have a disagreement always oh there you go with always most of the time <laughs> recognize that I had a part in this but it's not all on me helping instead of hearing how depressed hurt or angry the other person feels you try to solve the problem or help him or her wife comes home rough day at work I'm so frustrated, I'm just having all these issues with a coworker, and instead of husband saying, man, that sucks, I have faith in you and your ability to handle this. And just being able to empathize, be like, yeah, I think if I was in your place, I'd have a hard time with that too. Like, how are you handling this? What are you gonna do tomorrow? And just really being there to support from the stance of not having an advice, any advice, versus, well, how did you handle it? What was your conversation like? What did you say? What did they say? And trying to go through the play-by-play. -play. And so a lot of times helping often comes off more like critiquing the person that you're trying to help. It can come off that way. And so often helping is actually one of the worst things you can do. Supporting and saying, man, I'd be frustrated too. Empathizing, 
validating, like, yeah, that sucks, you know, that kind of thing is more supportive. I can imagine that helping is much harder for children. When you have children, we want so badly to have the answers for them or some kind of explanation for our children. And ultimately, we can't, we can't solve their problems for them. We've got to work through it for, with them and let them know that we support them. And part of it is also letting them know that we have faith in their ability to handle it. And when we try to solve their problem, essentially, or anyone's problem, what we're essentially telling them is, you're right, you can't handle this on your own. Let me jump in and help you. Sarcasm. Use your words or tone of voice to convey tension or hostility, which you aren't openly acknowledging. Um, just rolling your eyes, getting attitude, yeah, whatever, that kind of thing. That's a defense. Because what we're doing there is we're trying to dismiss the other person as having power. We're dismissing their power as a human being. We're trying to say, oh, you don't have that. You don't have that kind of impact on me to try to protect our ego. But what you're doing is devaluing their worth to them, which again is being emotionally irresponsible, I'm using your term. And things like that can have a, a permanent impact on the relationship. It's very hard to recover from things like that. It feels like a room of mirrors here. I need to be more aware and be more responsible for me and how I come across. Yeah, so, and that's one of those things, There's you don't need to have any shame about that or, or beat yourself up about that because we're all learning and we're working on it. I do it too. What's happening there is you're feeling very injured. Something, something really hurt you. And the reason it hurt you is because you care so much. For people who don't care, it's very easy to stay very neutral and very calm during heated discussions. You're feeling so hurt that you're really needing to protect yourself in some way. And so when you find yourself getting sarcastic, instead of criticizing your communication style, like I'm being a bad communicator, or shoot, I'm doing this horrible thing in this relationship, I want you to take a moment and to be able to remind yourself that, oh my gosh, that really triggered me. Like that hit a sore spot. What can I do to take care of myself right now in this moment because I really need to take care of myself before I can offer something that would be productive for this argument. We have these emotional wounds. You were not born with that. It, it, it's something that happened to you and so something triggered that and it hurts. And so yeah, you're putting up some defenses and that's solidly normal. And now you can just begin using that as information for yourself. And so some other things we do, we scapegoat. We suggest that the other person has a problem and that you're staying happy and uninvolved with that conflict. Something's wrong with them. Everything about you is fine if they weren't there. And so that's kind of blaming, but also um, a little more specific and pointed. Defensiveness, you refuse to admit any wrongdoing or imperfection. I didn't do that. I'm not responsible for any of this. And, and really defensiveness is kind of the the basis of all of these other defense mechanisms that we're bringing out, you know, in our arguments. Refusal to acknowledge your peace in it, and then everything else is your reaction to what the other person said, how you behave as a response to, to your own piece of denial, essentially. A counterattack, instead of acknowledging how the other person feels, validating them and acknowledging your peace and, and taking responsibility for at least your 50% of this argument, you respond to their criticism by throwing it back at them. Who does that? <laughs> well, you the other day didn't. <laughs> Even me going through this with you guys, I'm like, oh, shit. I did that earlier. Yeah. Now I get it. We're, we're, we're a work in progress, aren't we? <laughs> And what's so important is as we continue to educate ourselves and remind ourselves of this, again, this has been years, 10 years of me having this piece of paper and going through it occasionally with clients and every time there's something that stands out to me that I'm like, oof, I'm still working on that one. The last one is diversion. Instead of dealing with how you both feel in the here and now, you list grievances about the past and all those past injustices. We bring, instead of saying in the present, saying, okay, screw the past, like right now, I'm upset about this and I need to share with you how I feel. And I'm saying, okay, let me acknowledge how you feel right now and help you heal this and let's work through this now. 
you guys, well, in the past you did this 35 times and well, you responded this way and it just becomes about things that you can't control that anymore. All we can control is this right here and now. We do that when we are trying to justify the significance of our feelings and what gets missed is the significance of our feelings when we do that, when we go into the past and we don't deal with what's going on right now, even though that's what our intention is. So anyways, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that created some insight and not too much shame. Oh, there comes my dog. There's Kira. Oh, he's here. <laughs> All right. I guess that's my cue. I hope you guys have a great night and curious to hear if you have any more thoughts or points to bring up later on as you let that simmer. And um, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Ah.